What's happening guys, Mike here from Hammer Fitness. Look, today I wanna to talk to you guys about the three energy systems that we use. Now you're probably thinking, Mike, I don't really need to know about that, but in fact, you really, really do. Now, actually gaining this knowledge is going to give you such an upper hand you wouldn't believe. Put it this way, the better you know how to actually use something or how it actually works, then you're going to be able to do it more efficiently and more effectively. So what you're saying is, if I know how a TV works, I could watch it a bit better? Well, no, not really. Well, kind of you do because of the blue light that's getting emitted and you might be able to watch TV at a better time to get a better sleep, maybe. But no, that's not what I really mean. So I actually used to ride BMX and having such a passion to ride BMX, I got into being a bike mechanic at Gold Cross way back in the day in my early teens. Now actually, doing this got me familiar a lot more familiar with my BMX because I was actually pulling apart and putting together bikes again and actually knowing how the bike worked I was able to build and construct something that worked for me now that's exactly what I'm talking about when you know how your body works you're going to be able to set up a lifestyle that works for you okay so let me break it down we have three different energy systems that we're actually using every single minute of every single day now the rate ratio of each may be a lot different. Okay, so the first one, we have ATP, CP. Now what that stands for is adenosine triphosphate. Now you don't actually have to know that, but as long as you know ATP, CP, or at least CP, which stands for creatine phosphate, which is our fuel. Now this fuel source is predominantly used around power lifters. Now it actually uh, contributes to the first zero to 10 seconds of your lift. It's actually going to be the most explosive power in your energy systems. Anaerobic, so we're thinking more uh, bodybuilding slash hypertrophy, so more of your exercises that contribute to your eight to 12 reps. Now what this energy system does is it gives you an explosive amount of energy for up to 60 seconds, okay? So the first one is your ATP, CP or your creatine phosphate. And then your second one to take over, which is a little bit less power, but still up there, up to 60 seconds worth is your anaerobic. Now, this is the important part to understand because this is this energy group right here is going to be able to help you develop a tighter and more toned body. Or for you fellas out there, it's actually going to be able to build your muscles because the energy that actually powers this is glucose or glycogen once it uh, gets digested from carbohydrates. So you can actually hold on to 15 grams of glycogen per kilo of body weight. So now you're probably thinking, what does that mean? Well, it means the larger the muscle belly, the more uh, fuel you can actually hold in this category and the more weight you can lift, vice versa. Now, so I hope that's making sense. As you train this to actually fail, so let's say we're thinking, let's go bench press. Eight to 12 reps, and you're working just under 60 seconds. So rule of thumb, about 30 to 40 seconds time under detention is around about that eight to 12 reps, which is why that rep range is so common to build muscle, tone up, uh, etc. Now what you're doing here is you're actually telling your muscle bellies that we need to store more fuel to be able to lift more weight. So as long as you're failing to get to your eight to 12 reps, so essentially you want to at least get eight, but you don't want to get to 12, so you want to fail, okay? So now what your body's registering is we need to build the muscle to allow more glucose to be stored so we can actually lift more or lift for longer. Now, a really important tip for this energy system is the break time, all right? It's definitely underestimated and overlooked when it comes to lifting weights. A lot of people don't take enough break time, so we're looking for this energy group around double the time, which is around a minute to a minute and a half, maybe even up to three minutes. So a minute and a half will probably get you half of your glycogen or your energy back, but not all of your energy back, all right? So you must take that in as well, because as we start working out, we get what's called glycogen depletion. So we're actually using the energy out of the muscle bellies, which is why you'll find your weights will gradually go down as you get through the workout. Now, that is what's happening, and that's why you gotta pretty much push yourself to fail. So you, you're telling your body that it needs to be able to up the capacity or dense in the muscles. A lot of people, or particularly females, is they think when they're lifting weights, they're just gonna be big and bulky. Look, I've been trying to do it for nine years and I'm just getting there, okay? So look, 
at the start, your muscles will densen and you actually might even gain weight, even though you might not gain too much size, you'll gain weight because your muscles are densening, trying to fill in as much glucose to actually have the capability to lift the amount of weight you're trying to lift. 30 to 40 seconds time on, at least double the time off to regain half of your energy back to have an efficient next set. Now if you don't take enough break time, you won't get an efficient next set and your weights will go down too quickly to be able to tell your body that you need to up your weights and what we'll actually start doing is we'll move more into your aerobic energy system which is the third one. So our aerobic energy system is pretty much the energy system that we're using for majority of our day. It's going to have the highest ratio as it takes the least amount of power and it actually uses fat as the energy source as well as glucose. But here's the thing, as long as you know how these energy systems work, you're going to be able to not only have the most effective and efficient workouts, you're also going to be able to burn as much fat as you can because if you haven't already picked it up already, if you're trying to lose weight and you can deplete your muscles of any source of energy from the aerobic system, you can start lifting a little bit lighter after you've lifted heavy or even go for a light jog or walk after you've lifted weights and then get your body to pull the fat as energy. All right, I hope that makes sense. So you're essentially depleting your energy from your muscles and then you want to pretty much use your aerobic system, so obviously low weights or cardio to burn the fat if you're in a deficit of calories. Yes, we have a graph. Now you're probably thinking, oh, but Mike, I can't be bothered looking at a graph. Now look, I want you to understand this because you're gonna get huge benefits out of knowing how to actually use your body efficiently. Now, in green, we're gonna have the ATP, CP, or creatine phosphate. So, very fine line, but you can just see we've got the most explosive power back up and down to up to about 10 seconds. The next one's our anaerobic system, which I'll have in red. As you can see, we've got a spike and then a quick drop, so that's up to about 60 seconds. And our last one, in brown is going to be the aerobic system. Okay, so low power but very sustainable and pretty much for as long as you really need. It's going to use not only glucose but fats as well. Now, actually understanding how much power you've got, how much time you've got which e with each energy system, you're able to get a more efficient set, a more efficient workout and actually be able to utilize every day to the most uh, effectiveness. Now, Knowing how ATP, CP works, you're able to use, let's say, creatine. Everyone asks me what creatine is for. It's actually for this energy system. If you want to get one or two extra reps in your set while you're doing an explosive movement, this is where it's at. So creatine is essentially going to be able to fuel this system. Uh, on average, the average person's got about six seconds of this explosive power. Now with creatine, you may be able to up that another few seconds. Those few seconds may mean another few reps, which could mean more gross, uh, muscle growth or a bit more tightening and toning of your muscles. Now knowing how the anaerobic system works that actually just uses glucose, will mean that you not only know that you need carbs or glucose to actually have an effective workout, you also know how to lose fat efficiently. Now remember, having carbs or glucose will actually up insulin. The further insulin is up, the less fat you can burn. The less insulin in the body, the more fat you can burn. All right? So the lower your glucose or glycogen levels, in your body, the more fat you can burn. Yes, it does mean you won't have as uh, much power in this zone, but it also means you know how to pretty much space or when to actually consume carbs, AKA around your workout when you actually need the power. When you don't need the power, don't have carbs. Another thing with the anaerobic system is you wanna be careful of actually working out too long. Now you may be able to fuel between workouts to actually continue your workout, but let's say if you're just doing chest and triceps. Now they've got a certain amount of fuel there because of the uh, size and density of the muscle. Now that's actually got a limit to uh, when or how long you can work out for. The longer you work out, the more cortisol that's going to be released, so the stress hormone. 
which is also catabolic, which means muscle breakdown, and you can actually cause such glycogen depletion, which means there's no fuel there, uh, which can also mean a, a catabolic effect, which means muscle breakdown. What this is called is proteolysis, all right? So this means muscle breakdown. It's actually going to, your body is gonna turn muscle into glycogen to use for fuel. Now, that's not what you want, okay? So you wanna know your body just like you wanna know this, so you don't have muscle breakdown and you get an efficient workout. So to give you an idea, just have rule of thumb, a good natural Natural workout is between 30 to 60 minutes. All right? No longer unless you're timing your foods perfectly or you're fueling between workouts. Knowing how the aerobic system works means you can actually burn more fat once you've depleted your glycogen stores in your muscles, which literally means just a light jog, walk, uh, or even light weights in a lifting session, maybe at the end of a heavy lift, depleting your glycogen. I hope this makes sense, guys, because if you can actually grasp and get your head around this you're going to just conquer your own body which at the end of the day is exactly what I want for absolutely everyone I want them to know I want you guys to know your body is inside out so you can finally have control of your body and not have it control you so the next time you're in the gym have a think about this video have a think about all the tips and stuff I gave you uh, and all the info and really think about what energy systems you're working how you can utilize them to the absolute maximum, whether or not you've eaten at the right time, whether or not you're having enough break, whether or not you're pushing yourself enough. Uh, to really have a think of what's actually happening, uh, what I've taught you in this video. So what's actually happening during your workout, how you can do it better, uh, and actually adjust your day and your workouts to get the maximum out of every single day and workout. And that is it guys, I hope this video helps heaps. If you've got any questions at all, please feel free to hit us up on Facebook. Give that Facebook page a like and even jump across to our YouTube channel give that a like so it's getting updated every single week on heaps of advice and tips on your fitness and health journey. Uh, love you guys to bits I'll see you guys in the next video.